grave robber and probably the jester maybe but silvio i think wants you to love the jester um <laughs> so so it's a you're kind of reluctant to it a little bit so uh for the how about you what is your, you you seemed you said that there's only one right answer and now i'm curious what do you think that is because i love the occultist like the occultist is amazing uh and i think a lot of people get tattoos of the occultist the occultist has the zero crit heal memes i know it's amazing but uh yeah but no for me what i feel is the only correct answer because he is the most difficult character to make work in darkest dungeon the leper no no abomination (laughs) oh the bomb yeah 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 yeah. because yeah at least with all the different DLCs that have come out, the only healer that can, like, true healer that can work with him is an occultist. And again, yeah. occultist is Feast of Famine with his heals, and the uh, Abomination already has low bleed resist already, so the one yes. healer that works with him has a good chance to cut him open. So you normally yeah, yeah. have to run, like, uh, someone with Cure, so a Plague Doctor, or even an Arbalist with uh, Abomination. But the Abomination as a class itself is someone that I have always enjoyed it's always angered me so much that i can't use a vestal yes, or yeah. um a flagellant or whatever with him it's like he has really good utility he has good self he uh heal and de-stressor uh his double bile is actually really strong especially with the debuff it applies afterwards too yeah and if you ever need some just hulk smash damage the abomination is always a little bit of a soft spot for me primarily because he's next to impossible to use <laughs> yeah exactly that's a great answer i actually didn't expect that answer um if you hang around the darkest dungeon subreddit it's pretty much all leper all day so i expect and most because <laughs> most people say the leper is the most useless character because it can't do anything with the back line and it's always missing etc but no you're totally right and that's an important point about darkest dungeon as a base game as much as i love the vanilla game you know one of the major complaints people have is the religiosity of it in mm-hmm. the sense that certain classes won't work with certain others you literally just can't play them together and uh that is a big limitation it's interesting because it forces certain interactions and forces certain groups rather than just relying on the same thing over and over but it's frustrating because you can't use certain classes in most combinations so i think that yeah the bomb is a great answer i definitely dig what you have to say there <sighs> Now, the next one, this is kind of a follow-up for the previous question, but much more direct now. Favorite ability in oh, Vanilla, yeah. Darkest Dungeon, and in Pitch Black. Oh, my goodness. Uh, okay, well, if you've been watching any of the stream lately, then uh, you probably know that my favorite ability is the Occultist Heal. Um, because in Pitch Black Dungeon, especially, and this is true of Darkest Dungeon, if you get to the champion game in general, mm-hmm. it's like as soon as you... As soon as you start to ascend the tiers of difficulty in Darkest Dungeon, you realize you have to adapt to the gameplay in a lot of different ways. And one of those ways is, uh, as you get to the champion game, the late game, level 5 and 6, you definitely need to respect guard because your characters can just be crit. You yep. also need re- you need reliable big heals. And so the, the thing about the occultist is, I heard somebody said this the other day when there was an argument in chat about uh, if the Vestal is better than the occultist. They said, if the occultist couldn't zero heal, I would take it nothing and nothing else all day. And that's an interesting point. But really, lately, at least in the playthrough that we're doing with Pitch Black Dungeon, I lean so hard on the Occultist because it's also a mark class. It also clears corpses. It also has the ability to hit a, bla- a back line. And, uh, and then, you know, the mechanics are changed a little bit in PvD, so you have the potential for stuns if you use some of the tentacle play. But the biggest thing is just if you get hit really hard, the Occultist is the only one so far that just... 74 crit heals and bring somebody back from the yeah. brink of death you know so uh it's probably the occultist heal because if you've been watching anything recently you've you, you've seen uh you've seen us lose um some pretty sad group wipes to certain bosses <laughs> yeah. and, and, uh, and things like that and and unfortunately and, and i'm and i'm being a bit of a hypocrite here in both of those occasions the, the, the occultist just didn't show up and we got really really low heals or two zero heals so um it's my favorite but also most hated ability probably in pvd um but there are some really really great stuff and the thing about pitch black dungeon that is so smart is they is that they really set out to make a version of the game that you can't cheese right so as an example um you can't remove mark with the arbalist flare yep. so you can't just cheese you can't as easily cheese the swine king uh, they change the way that the profit works, um, so you can't just bring an occultist to it and constantly de- uh, spam 
reduce reduction of damage and then just have it basically hit you with nerf balls like it's mm-hmm. that that's a really really smart adaptation and uh so uh, there's there's so many good answers there because all the abilities that are tweaked um play really 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 well i mean the other one again is the jester the jester's bleed skill also has a corpse clear so you can just lean so hard on that um but i guess in the in the base game i would say um in the base game probably my 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 favorite ability is is maybe uh lunge with the grave robber because it's so fun but also um and i wish they hadn't have changed it because it's a really contentious one but uh, finale with the jester is an amazingly stylistic thing too. The ability that you could, the, the the fact that you can play a jester as mostly a stress healer and a bleeder, but then also as this thing that dances around the stage and then has this amazing finale damage that shuffles it all the way back and he bows as the audience claps. I mean, mm-hmm. there's something so beautiful about that ability. Um, that ability not... used to be like so incredibly powerful too. Like a finale yeah. is still a great ability, but. Yeah. Uh, after yeah, it was during the Crimson Court when they nerfed it because it used to have I think uh, like thirty percent more base damage before the multipliers took place. So finale could right. crit people for like eighty damage beforehand. Right. Whereas now, yeah, and I think you used to have people who would start their groups with a position one jester, open up with finale, and then just crush whatever's in the front line. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, Red Hook has been smart to think about making the game more balanced and they've done a lot of different balance changes that make a lot of sense there's a lot they could still tweak about it there's a lot that they could uh they could take a note from pitch black dungeon from i think but uh yeah that's one of them i mean i just think stylistically it's a really cool ability the first time you ever use finale and you see the jester take this bow and you hear the audience cheer you're like that's really unique that Mm -hmm. is really really cool uh i mean this is this is again when you ask me favorites my answers don't necessarily come from a place of utility or the best in the game or the most powerful because there's a lot of things that exist especially in the base game but also in pbd like the hellions yop which is uh, her screen that stuns the first two uh i mean that is in- insanely potently powerful it's, it's yeah. probably way too powerful it's base and it's base stun ratio is insane already i mean exactly it's only a debuff right. afterwards that's all it is right yeah you so once you start to get a little bit into the nitty-gritty of darkest dungeon you get a little bit accustomed to knowing like you're gonna play a hellion it's gonna be rank one you're gonna spam yop you're gonna make sure that you can hit the back line with this and that you I mean you start to lean on these abilities that are just so damn strong mm-hmm. they're really really hard to get away from so usually when people ask me favorites i think stylistic i think i think you know nece- not necessarily mechanistic but but what was the concept here and why is it cool you know hopefully uh, i answered those questions oh no you certainly did Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What is the most terrifying monster in the in the game to you? Simply gameplay wise. What uh it can either it could be a boss, it could just be a uh just a specific m- mob monster. What is the most terrifying monster in the game for you to deal with? Um so again, this will be different between pitch black dungeon and base game. I'll say base game wise in the vanilla game, you know, there are a lot of monsters that people really, really dread. Um, the Shambler's one of them, because if you summon the Shambler, you go into this crazy fight where it's totally pitch black in a cosmic arena and the stress is insane. And it's definitely kicked my ass a few times. Um, uh, a lot of people run into the Collector in the base game and they have no idea what it is, mm-hmm. how to deal with it. And every time they run into it, it freaks them out. These, however, are bosses that you can adapt to fairly well. You can get a little bit good about just kind of expecting when, uh, when, when they're going to come and how they're going to come, et cetera, et cetera, and how to get through them. Uh, for me, it's uh, you know, an other popular answers are things like uh, the Swine Skiver. So if you've ever played in the Champion game, and you've gone into the Warrens, you'll run into this pig that has all these quills in its pack, and it just does ruthless damage. And uh, this is one of those monsters that when you play Pitch Black Dungeon is severely nerfed, right? And Pitch Black dungeon is supposed to be a more challenging uh more interesting version of the game and the fact that they nerfed it says something about just in the vanilla game on the other hand though uh, so, some of the bosses that you see in pitch black dungeon give me night uh if you if you saw our most recent streamer we tried the uh the champion prophet i am still traumatized from that fight because we got it literally down to two health out of 300 185 left and then all four characters died so two out of 385 doesn't leave you you just that, oh. that is permanently tattooed on you and you walk out of there 
Um, so that's giving me nightmares. But uh, normally in the base game, the profit just isn't, a, it's a joke. You don't care about it. So, because um, you just bring an occultist and weaken its damage. Uh, so I think the Swine Skiver is a decent answer. Um, there's also a Virago, which is a, a sort of the wheeled version of the Swine Skiver. It's, it's, um, it's a really creepy, uh, diseasey kind of blight oriented thing in the wheel that you can run into. That one's kind of challenging. Um, Honestly, the next thing that I'm most worried about is uh, is the is the flesh. So the flesh boss, which is after the swine god, it's very different in Pitch Black Dungeon because it cures itself. So if you if you play it in the vanilla game, you just bring a bleed group, maybe even throw mm -hmm. in some blights, and because it has a shared health pool over four different heads, you can just spread those, and every single time a head takes a turn, it just ticks the entire amount, the, the total sum of damage, and that's an easy easy way to get through it. But in Pitch Black Dungeon, it cures itself. You can't bleed it. You actually have to bring stuns and Ooh. shut the heads down. You got to mark the hearts. It is a completely different fight, but uh, you can still just get one hit on that fight. I have no idea how we're going to go at it. It <laughs> used to be things like the cannon. The cannon scares me a little bit because if you just mess up a little bit, uh, you don't kill the matchman. That cannon's going to crush your team. I've had that happen a couple times. It's you in your it's in your game. intro highlight video. It's amazing. Yes, <laughs> yes, that's exactly right. So that one is a little bit freaky, but um, yeah, ultimately I think the profit was a bit of a uh, was was traumatizing. But I, I'm not looking forward to fighting the flesh in Pitch Black Dungeon. That is that's gonna that's I don't know how we're gonna approach that yet. So those uh, those are my I think those are my my answers <laughs> could go on about that one to be honest that's uh, the beauty of darkest dungeon is that they made monsters and bosses challenging terrifying and really like you really have to think about adapting to them and even if you do you've still got to be a little bit lucky you know you still got to get things moving in the right direction and hope you don't get just crit so uh yeah beautiful game terrifying me, I get terrified whenever I'm in the cove and I see any group that has a thrall in it. I'm just like, oh no. <laughs> and they'll yeah, still have yeah. those little two little, uh, sh oh, I can't remember what the actual names are, but little shamans that stress the fuck out of your party. Oh, and the yeah, backs yeah, is yeah, like, yeah. all right, do I value stress or do I value hit points? Because I have to deal with one, but I can't do both. Stress mobs is a great answer because uh, if you're not respecting stress, you just lose everything you know i mean and that's how we lost that's how we lost uh the whole group wipe to the prophet the other day was i didn't expect the champion prophet to literally mm -hmm. afflict my entire group and when two when it has two hp left out of 385 <laughs> one character that would have virtued rather than had an affliction one character that would have been able to, that i would have been able to control rather than doing something uncontrollable because of that affliction means we would have killed that boss and had four characters left so you have to respect stress i think that's a really really good answer too all right so finish this sentence you are finishing a rest and you did not prevent nighttime ambush you wake up and find a party of blank and instantly shit yourself oh easy so this is the easy a perfect segue right because if you if you don't prevent ambush and you get and you get ambushed you wake up with no light so if you mm -hmm. if you wake up with no light that means extra crits coming your way that means extra stress coming your way the worst group i've run into i think thus far in pitch black dungeon we did a we did a single dungeon run where we summoned and killed three swine kings and a veteran collector in the same run, and it was an unbelievably kick butt run. I mean, it felt so great, but we almost lost it all because we turned a corner into a, a what's called a damnable group. So one of the one of the mobs has a damnable affix, right? So these affixes exist in PVD, kind of like Diablo. It forced us to have zero torchlight, so it immediately brought us to mm -hmm. pitch black. Stress was massive, but the group composition was a ghoul, okay, and then two stress witches. So it was like, not only is there no light here, you're going to get crit, and you're going to get howled, and you're going to get massively stressed. And literally, it broke the entire team. I had two death stores. Somebody broke with an affliction. I mean, three swine kings were no sweat compared to this thing. So if you wake up in, in an ambush after you've camped, I mean, the reason you camp is to clean your group up, to get them buffed, to, to bring the stress down. If you wake up in an ambush half the time you wish you didn't camp in the first place if you wake up in that ambush and it's something like a ghoul and a bunch of stressors you really wish you didn't camp in the first place because mm -hmm. now you just you're just paying for it so that's probably my best answer but i think you know uh there are other things you could wake up to um that would be terrifying a skiver would be one of those things even a swinatar in certain uh in certain cases swinatars can be pretty damaging 
especially if you get shuffled, right? The worst part about waking up in an ambush, in my 